Antarctica icy empty, desolate, cold those are words to describe it, but it was not always this way. The great southern continent was once covered with forests, and dinosaurs roamed free. How could such an icy wilderness once be so warm that the Earth's most gigantic creatures could live in it? To understand this, we have to go back in geological time. Antarctica was ice-free during the Cretaceous period, which lasted from 145 to 66 million years ago. Such a long time may seem unfamiliar, but we know it because it was the last era of the dinosaurs before an asteroid crashed into the Earth and ended their stay on this planet. During this period, there were forests at both poles. Fossils of trees and cold-blooded reptiles have given scientists an idea of what the climate was like. Cold-blooded reptiles needed solar heat to survive. They, we see them basking in the sun during the day. The poles, the sun disappears during the winter months, must be warm enough for them to survive in the dark. Scientists are also using the shells of fossil organisms that lived in the ocean, called foraminifera, to understand past climates. Analyzing the chemical composition of their shells, and knowing the age intervals when different species lived, can get an estimate of ocean water temperatures at that time. Dr. Brian Huber of the Smithsonian Natural History Museum studies the Cretaceous period, focusing on deep water objects around Antarctica. He explains Foraminifera provide some of the best records because you have both bottom dwellers living in sediments and recording ocean bottom temperature and planktonic dwellers living in the upper 50 meters of the ocean and recording atmospheric temperature. You combine these records over time and analyze shells from different parts of the ocean around the world, get a really good idea of climate evolution. Or specifies that what they found in the southern ocean around Antarctica was hard to believe at first because it seemed too warm. Found a temperature of 30 C at 58 degrees south latitude, near the Antarctic Circle. These high temperatures were observed in the middle of the Cretaceous period, known as the Cretaceous Greenhouse, a greenhouse effect caused by an increase in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. But what happened in the Cretaceous period to create a world with trees and dinosaurs roaming Antarctica, as opposed to the barren ice fields of today? Huber explains, what we know about the mid-Cretaceous period, in particular, is that the rate of seafloor spreading was much higher, and therefore there were more volcanic sources of CO2. Huber and his colleagues continue to investigate whether the greenhouse was created by a large number of volcanoes erupting, spewing CO2, and creating a greenhouse blanket that warmed the earth. We all know the climate is changing, it has changed in the past, it's changing now, it will change in the future, but how is what we do now different from what it was in the Cretaceous period? Antarctica soon be ice-free again? This is really an unprecedented rate and scale of change compared to the geological events of the past that we know of. This is truly an unprecedented rate and magnitude of change compared to the geological events of the past that we know of. We are releasing hundreds of billions of tons of CO2 into the atmosphere in just a few decades. Volcanoes can't produce that much CO2 in such a short period of time, even if they are huge volcanoes, Huber says. As for the future, Huber suggests, I think we're going to see, perhaps decades or maybe centuries from now, so-called ice flows that start flowing faster, it could happen that West Antarctica, in particular, starts to deglaciate. Even the rate of ice flow, we won't see, all of, Antarctica glaciated in a few decades. Glaciologists predict that once you start to raise the sea level, positive feedback will start to come back, and let the ice flow faster, the sea level will rise faster, and then all of this will continue. But yes, I think the signs are already there. The dinosaurs won't roam Antarctica anymore. We can't rule out it being ice-free in the future. We can't know what that will be like for humans, we've never lived on Earth when there was no ice at the poles.